Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be talking about the 5 most nerfed and 5 most buffed heroes of patch 7.35c. So, what we're going to be doing is kind of talking about the win rates, the items that have affected these heroes, and then of course, the direct changes to these heroes that have caused them to either become much better or much worse. So, without further ado, let me break it down for you guys, kind of educate you on what's going on in the patch, and sure, let's just, let's just hop right into it. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. Starting off with the first hero, we have Meepo. Meepo, funny enough, probably isn't a terrible hero, even though it is the most nerfed hero of the patch. And the reason why it's the mo most nerfed hero of the patch, down 3.5% win rate, very significant, is a multitude of reasons. And I mean a multitude of reasons. Okay, first things first. The items that were buffed, none of them benefit Meepo, right? I'm talking about items like Yasha, Kaya, Sanj, any of the neutral items, really seemingly none of them buff Meepo. Everything that was nerfed hurts Meepo. Okay, outside of like Mage Slayer, I guess Meepo didn't really care much about Mage Slayer or by Mage Slayer, but let's get into what actually hurt Meepo. So the first item was Diffusal Blade. They slightly nerfed it by giving it a mana cost. However, the bigger nerf was to Disperser. The item is more expensive and no longer affects the unit in an AoE. So previously, if you dispersed yourself on Meepo, it would disperse all of the Meepos, giving you haste movement speed on a hero that typically gets kited and countered by AoE slows, such as Venogel, Quap Dagger, and other spells alike, right? Now, Meepo just can't do this. This was a huge nerf to the hero in a lot of matchups and also just prevents him from chasing people down by clicking Disperser on himself or just farming faster. Like there were so many uses. So that was probably the big nerf to Meepo. And then the other nerf to Meepo was just straight nerfs to Meepo. First off, they nerfed his Shard Dig. It heals for 10% less now, which is very significant. And on top of that, the stat gain from Meepo's onto Mega Meepo, which is his axe, is 10% worse. So the reason why I don't think this hero is terrible is it one still one shots creep waves, it still farms really fast. This hasn't really gone away, but its ability to scale, considering they nerfed the shard, the ags, and disperser, really hurts this ability zero to come to this like crazy nutty timing where you have ag shard disperser and no one can kill you because of the built-in magic resist to your ult, and no one can kite you due to your ags shard and disperser. They've nerfed every component. So yeah, I would stay away from Meepo if you're not a spammer, but if you are a spammer, I wouldn't be that afraid of playing the hero. And on top of that, if I have to give Meepo any credit, they nerf Shivas. And at the end of the day, this was the only thing holding Meepo back from being the most busted thing in Dota's history. I, kind of. <laughs> like, yeah, Shivas is one of the best items in the game against Meepo, and it's super popular, right? Armor, attack speed slow, uh, regen reduction. Right, this is really good against Meepo, and it's been significantly nerfed, so there's something to be said there. Alright, getting into the second nerfed hero, this one's really, really easy, and it's Ember Spirit. The hero has dropped a uh, very significantly in winnery, and the reason why? Well, first of all, they just nerfed his W, but more importantly, like far more importantly, is the fact that Mage Slayer is way worse on Ember Spirit. Sure, it does a little bit more damage, but it costs more and it only lasts for three seconds. Previously, it lasted for six seconds. So if you slided the entire enemy team, they just did no damage for the entirety of Slide's cooldown. By the time it ended, you could slide them all again. And this is what made Ember viable. On top of that, Shiva's made Ember viable and they nerfed Shiva's. The only rewarding thing about Ember for this patch is that Kaiasan is a better item now, but I don't think that's gonna be enough and the win rate shows that. The next item is Doom. I don't think Doom is a bad hero. It's kind of like Meepo where the hero is so strong that a nerf to the hero isn't the end of the world. Now you might be thinking, but Speed, they also nerfed Shivas, right? This is the main item that enables Doom to be so broken. And you're right about that. That is the main item, but he's still good. Infernal Blade is still insane at level one. He still is a pretty good laner. He still scales incredibly well. He still hits this nutty timing later into the game that's very hard to deal with. And that's very good in pubs due to the innate scaling. And so yeah, I still think Shiva's Doom is probably the way to go. I do believe that there's an angle where you go Veil in a Midas, kind of delaying the Shivas because it's a bit more expensive and just really playing for the late game 
that makes this hero so broken, especially considering they nerfed Doom, right? The big thing that they did to Doom is, besides the fact that they nerfed his 10 talent and the moon speed on his W and Shiva's, is they made the ulti, instead of a 16 second duration at level 1, it's now 12, 14, 16, depending on the level. Next up is Slark. He lost Pounce cooldown, and that is actually a big deal. This ability used to be an 8 second cooldown at max, which was so crazy when Slark could have an 8 second cooldown Pounce with Ags. I remember that patch, it was really fun. <laughs> Not fun to play against though. Don't bring that back Valve, don't bring it back! I don't want it. But okay, why is Slark worse? Well, they nerfed all of his items. Of course, they nerfed the Ags by just nerfing Pounce cooldown, they nerfed uh, Diffusal, they nerfed Disperser, uh, they nerfed Mage Slayer, like, it's pretty simple to see why Slark is worse, right? They nerf everything. Like, literally everything going for the hero. Nerf, 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 nerf. Okay, that's about it. And then finally, the least nerfed hero, but still one of the most nerfed heroes of the patch, is Faceless Void. Thankfully for Faceless Void, he evaded most of the item nerfs. If he didn't evade the item nerfs, he would be giga nerfed. Like, Slark is primarily nerfed because of items. Void, well, Maelstrom is about the same, in fact, it is the same. Uh, they just nerfed the hero. They nerfed time dilation at level 1 significantly, so this hero's ability to fight with the value put in in time dilation is far worse in the laning stage and in the mid game, so that really hurts the hero. They hurt the farming by nerfing the time lock. They hurt some of his talents, some of his significant ones like the level 20 talent, the level 15 talent, so they kind of just nerfed the hero overall, right? Um, and that's all I really have to say, right? Faceless Void was kind of just this broken hero. He needed to be tuned down. Valve tuned him down, he got hurt from the tunes, and uh, yeah, that's about it! Alright, now let's get into some of the most buffed heroes of the patch. Coming in at number one, we have Terrorblade, who actually does have the highest percentage increase in win rate. And honestly, I kind of predicted this after seeing the patch notes. Terrorblade's biggest problem previously in the landing stage was his bad base strength. The hero has incredible stats, some of the best trading abilities in the game, in Metamorphosis and Reflection, and some of the best base stats, right? Really high armor. However, his HP pool has always been the hero's problem. If playing against magic damage, for instance a Primal Beast or a Darkseer, there's a good chance he'll just get run down in the early levels. Then, they gave him two strength. And things like this might not seem like a big deal, but if it's the difference between you getting an extra auto attack or two off in Metamorphosis, it is the difference, and frequently will be the difference when trading with Metamorphosis or committing with Reflection. And not only that, they buffed Reflection, right? A uh, major buff to this ability. Yes, it's only a second cooldown, but in the early levels, 2 Strength plus Reflection cooldown makes this hero way better in the laning stage, and it was already a good laner, so pushing its strength even further, I definitely think Terrorblade, if you're a spammer of the hero, is going to be much better. Now, the problem with Terrorblade is the fact that the hero, at the end of the day, is still very hard, and not the best pop hero for the average player. I'm gonna keep it real. I don't think this makes Terrorblade broken, but he is arguably the most buffed hero of the patch. I also think Sanjin Yasha or Manta are very good on this hero, and Manta is incredibly buffed from what it used to be a few patches ago. All right, next up is Huskar, who didn't even get touched in the patch, funny enough. However, the hero's win rate has skyrocketed, and I think it's for a couple of very simple reasons. The main one being Halberd. Halberd got buffed very, very hard. The evasion on Talisman of Evasion was increased, the healing on Sanj was increased, and the cost of uh, Sanj was decreased. So basically the hero's best item, Halberd, outside of Armlet of course, was buffed. Now Armlet technically was slightly nerfed with the helm changes, and yes this actually does hurt Huskar. The hero doesn't feel good about the nerf of this item, but at the end of the day it's not that bad and the Halberd change is a big deal. On top of that they buffed BKB which helps this hero massively. And also something I would like to say is I think Mage Slayer is a bigger counter to Huskar than people realize, right? A lot of people think Huskar is just this pure right clicker with Berserker's blood and Burning Spears, but a lot of your damage comes from your Q, of course Burning Spears, and even your ultimate to some extent. And so being affected by Mage Slayer, one of the most popular items in the game, is rough. On top of that, Shiva's Guard, a very popular item, is also not good for Huskar. Neither is Orb of Corrosion, but that's less important. Shiva's Guard presented a big problem for Huskar. A high armor hero could man up to him potentially, reduce his regen. The attack speed's not necessarily a big deal against Huskar, but it's the regen reduction in the armor that prevent Huskar from really dealing with a lot of Shiva's buyers and often would get him killed. But now that they've buffed Halberd and BKB and nerfed Mage Slayer, I actually think it's a big opportunity for this hero to come back into the meta, especially if he happens to be countering some of the spirit heroes in the laning stage. Then we have Leshrac. Leshrac is no surprise to be on this list. Nerf to Mage Slayer is the biggest one. Now, 
Once again, I'd like to repeat that Mage Slayer is not a killed item, and if you're against a Leshrac who's delaying their BKB purchase, you should probably pick this item up. However, I would like to mention a couple of key changes that have super buffed Leshrac. Number one, they just straight up buffed the hero. Diabolic Edict, his W, does 10 damage at level one. This ability used to do seven per tick. Now it does 10. It was nine previous to this patch, so it didn't go from seven to 10, it went from nine to 10. I'm just trying to highlight how crazy this ability is now. Also, it went from 30 damage at max to 34, meaning when you get this ability maxed out, not will it only solo kill like any hero in the game, it takes buildings like no other. On top of that, they buffed the mana cost, uh, or the mana activation cost of the ulti. This hero has big mana problems. I think current mana boots are actually very good for Leshrac. The Bastion lane makes the hero a very scary laner, so mana boots being a just general better item nowadays definitely helps Leshrac. On top of that, they buffed Bloodstone, right? This is an item that is clearly better now that it just gives three mana regen. It builds from a Void Stone, and the nice thing is, if you want to build the Bloodstone for the bigger AoE and the spell Lifesteal, you can just buy a Void Stone right? That's huge. You can buy Voodoo Mask, which is a buffed item as well, a Void Stone, and feel really good. You get to buy buffed item and a new really good item for your hero. So I think just buff, 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 good mana boots, Mage Slayer nerf, definitely brings Leshrac back into the meta. However, if you're against him, I still would buy Mage Slayer, and I still think it's going to cause some issues for this hero, which is going to keep him from being a top meta hero, but we'll have to see. Then we have Alchemist. Alchemist was untouched this patch. Unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of buffed heroes in this patch. The reality is, is this was mostly a nerf patch. So the heroes that did receive major buffs or increases in win rate primarily came from the changes in items. Lycan actually is a hero I considered putting on this list because he increased in win rate by 2% due to the Helm Dom changes. And yeah, that one was really significant. But Alchemist was one of the big winners for item changes. Let's talk about a couple of them. First off, we have Radiance. This item was just buffed because now Talisman of Evasion gives 5% more evasion and that also applies to Radiance. Then we have Manta Style. It's cheaper. Then we have Orchid. I actually think Bloodthorn with Manta is often the way to go on this hero as the Manta's proc the Bloodthorn. Yes, Bloodthorn damage is nerfed and that feels a little bit bad, but Orchid cost is down. So your Manta cost is down by a little bit, your Orchid cost is down by a little bit, your Radiance is better, and I also think that this hero has the option to either go Sanjinyasha or Halberd now. Now that they've buffed Halberd significantly to have a cheaper cost, better status resist by 5%, at least on Halberd, uh, that's pretty incredible. And they increased the HP regen uh, or the HP amp that you get from this item, right? Which is great for a hero like Alchemist that of course has Chem Rage, right? Regen up the wazoo from his ulti and, and his shard if you decide to buy it. And so I think honestly the way to go on Alk might just be full tank. I would have recommended Shiva's if it wasn't nerfed. Shiva still is a great Alk item, but you can just truly play this hero as a get in the way nuker with Radiance into Sanjinyasha. After that, you can decide between a lot of items. It could be Blink, it could be Shadow Blade. There's a lot of routes you can go down. All right, and finally the last hero of the list is a bit of a sleeper pick. Maybe I'm a little bit biased because I'm a huge Timber fan, but this hero received very, very, very small nerfs. Right, It was one of the best heroes of the patch in my opinion, and I think the way they justify uh, not nerfing Timber very hard is because of the fact that they nerfed Shroud a little bit by 50 health, and they nerfed Shivas, of course, Right, two of the best items on Timber. However, one of the best items in the game, bar none on Timber, is Kaya. Right, This item is just better now. It gives 2% more spell amp, which is actually really nice. And on top of that, it's cheaper. So this item is just way better for Timbersaw, right? There's no doubt about that. And Sanj is way better. For the same reasons it's good on Alk, it's very good on Timber. And then from there, I don't think you have to really innovate on Timber. I'm going to make a video about this hero on the website. So if you guys are interested in that, check that out. Not going to make it for YouTube. But basically, I think the general build is like Kaya in a blink, back into Kaya Sanj, then into Eternal Shroud, and you're just unbelievably tanky with a buffed Kaya Sanj. It's much cheaper now. But right, that's going to be all for today's video. If I missed any heroes, you think there's a hero that's really, really buffed that you've been spamming, leave it in the comment section down below. I'd be really curious what you guys have to say, what you've been trying, what you've seen in the meta. Maybe like it. Who knows? That hero received a major buff uh, in this patch. I think in the previous patch too, but definitely in this patch with the Helm Dom cost. So I'm really curious to see how that plays out. But okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, 
Click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.